Welcome to Meet the HR Show. My name is Laura Nell. When we were growing up, you'd have aspiration. When I grow up, I'd like to be a doctor. I'd like to be a nurse. I'd like to be an engineer. So guess what, guys? Today we have a mechanical engineer called Esther Wairimu. She'll be sharing with us her journey and how she's been able to survive in this competitive industry. Sana. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure too to have you around. Yeah, so mechanical engineering, what does it entail? Uh, basically, I've been uh, performing uh, mechanical engineering since 2017. Uh -huh. That's when I finished uh, college. And uh, I first did a lathe machine operator. I was a lathe machine operator in the coastal region Kilifi, and uh, which I pursued for like uh, a year or so. And I was not so comfortable in the industry because I didn't find, it was a golf course, so I didn't find uh, so much room for me to grow. Yeah. Uh, since it's just, I'm just revolving around the lathe operation and that's it. Mm -hmm. And the basic maintenance of the um, uh, mower, mach mowing machine mm -hmm. and, you know, just golf operation, which is not much to do with uh, engineering. Yeah. So that's why I resigned my job in Kilifi to uh, pursue uh, a, a career here in Opibus, mm -hmm. uh, which was a startup by then doing a conversion of uh, electric safaris uh, from uh, fossil fuel to electric okay. and uh, it was very interesting for me okay i dealt with buggies before but yeah. buggies are just babies you know <laughs> and then now here is the big deal it's yeah. a safari four by four and you have to convert it to electric and it was so awesome it was i couldn't dream uh, bigger than that by then. you've talked about dreams was this your dream career i w i wanted to pursue law and engineering yeah. and i was torn in between the two because i mean I really love what law entails and yes. I also love uh, mathematics and sciences uh -huh. but I was also good in languages so I opted for engineering since I was very technical from from when I was a kid I was yes. very hands-on so that's why I ended up in engineering ah engineering mm -hmm. how long did it take you to finish school I did uh, three years three years yeah in Kabete Polytechnic ah now how did you land to this job I after resigning my job in uh, Kilefi, I wanted to go back to school and then I'd applied a, a couple of times here at Opibus. I learned about it from my, from a friend. Yes. And then after just I resigned that day, it's the same day I found my invitation letter to uh, that join same that day. same day. So I was like, ah, let me go and try it. And once I got here, it was wow, I, wow. there's no turning back. And then I opted to pursue a course he, uh, a, my career here instead. What do you love about mechanical engineering? I love working with my hands. I love uh, the whole process of disassembly. You've, I love the entire drivetrain, and uh, I think um, uh, I love the Spanner more. <laughs> <laughs> you love the Spanner more. For the many years that you've done, it's all about learning and learning. How has the learning curve been for you? Uh, since uh, I, uh, college, I think uh, my learning curve has been quite consistent, and uh, I'm really proud of my progress so far because now I've gone way further from uh, mechanical engineering and I'm also learning more to do with electrical because as you can see there's an electric car and I'm involved sometimes in most of the wiring so I get to move from mechanical and as well learn as uh, more to do with electrical which I was so passionate about and uh, I find it as a good step for me moving forward. Ah, nice. Most ladies would say mechanical engineering is a no no for me. How are you surviving in this field? I think it's more of a perception. Th women think that uh, it's a it's a man type of job mm -hmm. uh, because it's uh, maybe dirty, maybe uh, too much hands on. And as you can see, I'm not dirty as you think <laughs> mechanical true. engineering should be. Yes. And uh, it's not as hands on as we have so many uh, uh, automatic machines that are in place in the moment. So yeah. there's no much hands-on that people will think of uh, so people just are scared I'd say sc being scared of the unknown and yeah. they should really try to pursue if you're good at science and you really like uh, being hands-on I think mechanical is the place for you uh, there are very many misconceptions about this career what are some of the misconceptions apart from it being a male-dominated um, uh, 
fields. What other misconceptions do we have? Uh, being male dominated, being that it's um, uh, engineering is a dirty field and mm -hmm. you know it's a kind of like a blue collar job. Yeah. And people think that uh, they should be in a white collar type of job but not blue collar. Yeah. And the other misconception is people think it's very hard and it's really hard to get to understand and to learn about it, which is not true. It's really simple. It's just like mm -hmm. how you learn to walk, ah. basically. So someone who wants to join this field, what exactly should they know? I think you just have to chase your dream mm -hmm. and follow your passion. If you're passionate about what I'm doing, yeah. I think you should chase it. I chased it from my previous job <laughs> to where I am today. You have to keep chasing. So uh, it, It's not a walk in the park, but like yeah. you say, uh, you, you won't just land on the opportunities instantly, but you have to chase the opportunities and you have to be very aggressive, especially if you're a woman, because it's quite What's tough out here. So yeah. you have to be very aggressive and... Uh, stand by what you believe in you have to be very hard working over here i have to uh, mostly i uh, i'll call my, uh, the the under the the trail my dance floor because that's where i mostly you dwell yeah as because most of the assembly are done from under so yeah. uh, i think you need to be open-minded mm -hmm. or let's say you don't need to be to uh, to create boundaries or choose what you, sh you, sh you should do and what you shouldn't do when it comes to engineering. You should be uh, open to do to pursue anything. If it's something that needs to be unfastened under under the vehicle, you should do it. If it's more electrical and there's someone who is ready and willing to guide you, you should be open to that because it's uh, the small things that makes a good uh, engineer. Mm, it's the small things that make a good engineer. Now for you to land into such a job, it's more of hands-on skills. What are some of the materials do I need to have to, let's say, apply for a good job at a mechanical engineering institution? Oh, okay, for a mechanical engineering institution, of course, you need to pursue a course in uh, the engineering-related course that you or in the field that you want. Yeah. So yes, you have to have uh, papers for that uh, type of job mm -hmm. and uh, that will make it easier for you. But that's not a limitation because some companies are uh, more like um, they train people to do this type of job. Not all the companies, but other companies like uh, electric cars, for example. Yes. It's a new technology. You, you do you won't. Ex I, I don't believe there's someone out there in in high school or university yeah. who is who knows everything about electric cars. They sure. really know. They know the minimal stuff about electric cars. Mm -hmm. So you get to learn most in the work environment. Yeah. So basically I've learned almost everything about electric car in this company. And uh, it's a startup and it's been a journey even for my bosses. Every day is a learning process. We learn, we unlearn and uh, that's how we roll. <laughs> okay, a lot of evolution, a lot of learning taking place. From where we, you began till right now, um, uh, apart from the trainings being given at uh, your workplace, where else do you get your trainings from? Uh, we do learn a lot of uh, materials online. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the, uh, uh, an electric car control, uh, contains a lot of components. These are DC converter. DC, DC. Converter, yes. And this is a BMS, battery monitoring system. Uh -huh. So all these uh, components come with a manual. Okay. Uh, you learn about uh, how you want to operate or wire the DC DC from the manual. Mm -hmm. You learn about the BMS from the manual. Mm -hmm. All these informations are available online. Yeah. So with a, a variety of uh, components here, we, you come up with all that knowledge together and you uh, bring it on the table and you come up with an electric car from that. Okay. Do I necessarily have to be an A student to do mechanical engineering? Not really. Not really. The passion can drive you. Yeah. The passion, it's all about passion. Mm -hmm. There are so many people, A students out there, yeah. who are not in the field, who are not where I am at the moment. That's but true. you have to be passionate about it mm -hmm. and be aggressive. Ah. Now that brings me to the question, how are you surviving in this industry? <laughs> Uh, for me, I think uh, it's not been a challenge because when I was growing up, mm -hmm. I was more of a kind, kind of a, a girl with a bo boy's responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I was, all my friends mostly were male and even in campus I was the only girl in our class. Mm -hmm. My other job, I was the only lady in the entire workshop yeah. and here I have quite a number of ladies around so it's nothing new to me it's yeah. what i've been used to all the time that's nice are there other ladies you're mentoring to come into this other side yes there are so many ladies that are impressed with what i do mm -hmm. and they really want to pursue engineering courses and i advise them every now and then to go for it mm -hmm. greatest achievement so far 
Greatest achievement uh, was featured uh, on October series of uh, National Geographic, and uh, the cover story is about the future is electric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, that's really nice. So that's one of your greatest achievements. Yes. I mean, being in the Nat uh, National Geographic magazine is that's a, a huge big accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> so during you growing up, you got a lot of support from your parents. Yes, I got a lot of support from my parents, but I won't say they pushed me to do engineering because mm -hmm. my mom was, I uh, know, she was, oh, she, you, uh, engineering <laughs> and especially mechanical is not for ladies. Yeah. You should do the women related courses. And I was <laughs> like, no, let me just try this. If it doesn't work out, then I'll mm -hmm. try something else. <laughs> ah, that's nice. So what would be your ultimate learning points that have enabled you to be where you are right now? I think is having a supportive colleague around me, having supportive bosses around me who always want me to do better and they're always there on, with me all throughout, the, uh, all throughout my steps in life. Mm -hmm. So every day I learn and I unlearn. Sometimes I make mistakes and they're always there to encourage me to go further and do better. Mm -hmm. It involves a lot of red, yellow, pink. Blue. I think there's pink there. Mm -hmm. That one looks like pink and purple. The shorts, how do you deal with that? Because as ladies, just one freak, you're like, no, I don't want to do that. First of all, before you come to this box, you yeah. have to know the schematics of uh, the wirings around here. You have to know how the power flows from the battery until, t so you know where to touch and where not to touch. Yes. So I won't end up uh, maybe fastening something around here because that's where the high voltage is. Okay. Uh, eventually, I'll end up having uh, 500 volts, mm -hmm. you know, that's too much. Uh -huh. So uh, you have to know the schematics of anything electrical before you start handling it. So at home you can fix the bulbs. Does it? I fix bulbs? my jug, my water heater jug every day. I <laughs> fix my water heater. That's yeah. yeah. So There's small is. things that you know. <laughs> That's really nice. So this has been an interesting field. A lot of men, a lot of um, other people. So for someone to join this career, would you advise them that it's not that flooded, and uh, should they join this career? For women, I'll advise you go for engineering because mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunities out here for women because it, uh, the perception is this is a, it's a male career mm -hmm. and uh, women tend to go for other courses like business, medicine, uh, nursing and all that, which are quite okay and mm -hmm. nice. But if you're passionate about engineering and uh, you're a lady, you should pursue it because it's not flooded. There's so much opportunity around for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, outside uh, mechanical engineering, what would you be doing extra if it wasn't this? Uh, on, on the side, I have my own company that uh -huh. I, I uh, during COVID, I was making, uh, I've been making hand washing station, the food operated hand wash washing st station. Those yes. are my side hustle. I think I'm a type of person that comes up with, a, I'm a solution type of person. Mm -hmm. So if I see a disaster or a problem around, I come up with solution and uh, that's how it was quick quick so um when it's evolving mechanical engineering from opibus where next do you see yourself in the next five years uh i think opibus is my dream company yeah. i love everything about electric uh, vehicles mm -hmm. and if it's not uh, electric cars i don't know where i'll rather be <laughs> other than my own company <laughs> that's very true some of the challenges Challenges around, I think, uh, yeah, but like for instance, uh, w you just uh, noticed that I was replacing this BMS, it yes. was faulty. No, Those BMS, are challenges. What is that? Battery monitoring system. You so, have a lot of abbreviation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, it was faulty, so I was re re uh, replacing that. So mm -hmm. with this type of system, since it's a, you know, it's a new technology, something yeah. we are learning every day, we get a lot of challenges with components and you, a lot of troubleshooting. But in the end, we end, uh, come up with a, uh, with a good product that is uh, working. Mm -hmm. And a uh, challenge in terms of my career as a woman, it's, uh, it's been a challenge, I'd say. I think... Uh, being a lady with, in a table full of men and you want to pitch your idea yeah. and uh, it takes a lot of guts for you to pitch that idea and uh, have the strength to push it until it's executed. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's the tough part of it, but uh, it's in those tough spots that we grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's say for you, 
gari ulianza ukiachiwa when you how old some of us even reversing the car is a problem <laughs> um i'm not I, i haven't been driving for long uh-huh. and i was not even driving before the bus so and this is more like a manual uh, uh I'd mm-hmm. say automatic car okay. because it's just drive and you go mm-hmm. reverse and it's reverse there's yeah. no much uh, gears to shift and uh, so it's very simple it's more like a toy car mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's really nice yeah. thank you for having us i just want to learn at least other abbreviations mm-hmm. other than the that one ms bms bms battery monitoring system yeah dc dc converter it's uh, basically it steps down uh, the uh, dc dc from uh, what we have uh, pack voltage which is uh, 500 yeah. to uh, 24 for the uh, uh, for uh, 24 then there's a small one for 12 so you can charge no these other batteries that help with uh, there's a uh, functions in the vehicle like for the lights they are 12 ah. system a uh, 12 volts functions yes we have the the lights uh, the horn there those functions that are 12 volts mm-hmm. but our system is a 500 volt system so you need to find a way to uh, draw the, uh, the 500 to Uh, to 12 uh-huh. so that's why you the dc so it's DC comes, a converter please. yeah it's a converter basically nell you are doing good your two <laughs> physics has done you well yeah. <laughs> thank you for having us yeah this welcome. is really amazing so from 8 to 5 your job 8 to 5 or your schedule is a little bit different yeah uh, my schedule is 8 to 5 yes 8 to 5 no 8 to 4 <laughs> 8 to 4 now how does your day look like i uh, once i come into the workshop uh if it's a new car coming into the workshop there's a, there's a disassembly part of it mm-hmm. so we have to remove the entire drive train from the tail pipes to the uh, uh, engine and as well as the transmission system so uh, after removing that that's when we went back to uh, electrical conversion okay. we this is our front box where the engine was initially so we do our battery modules here Uh, for the front box it, it's a 54 module system okay. that is a 52 kilowatt system mm-hmm. and uh, after you do the batteries you come to the uh, basic wiring this is the power shelf yeah and uh, there's a motor as well under the vehicle yeah. uh, the motor is coupled to the transfer case you do the, the uh, transfer transfer case like the transmission transfer how the, oh. how motion is transferred from yeah. maybe if it's the engine how motion is transferred from the engine to the wheels yeah. there's they need there's a need for a transfer gear mm-hmm. so you can have maybe it's four wheel or uh, only uh, two wheels ah okay <laughs> so that is your 8 to 5 Yeah, that's my nice. H to 5. And how long does it take you like uh, to transfer such a vehicle? Uh, uh depends on the workload that we have around. But ideally it should take us uh, two days to do the entire conversion. Whether it's a small car or a big car. Uh depends on uh, okay, if mm-hmm. it's a new car that uh, like for instance this one, we yes. already have designs in, pla- in place. Okay. So we just uh, must produce the boxes, we put it in place. We have the batteries, mm-hmm. we put it in place more of a assembly process. Okay. But if it's a new car that we don't have design and it involves uh, designing boxes and a lot of measurements, then it should take us uh, maybe two to three weeks. Mm. So you must produce and make everything from scratch. Yes. So it's more of you <laughs> So you have to get it right. Yeah, because here it was the engine. So you have to know if I want a box here, how big should the box be? Yes. What is the maximum height so it doesn't touch the bonnet mm-hmm. and it doesn't touch as well as the uh, arms for the steering wheel. So okay. yeah, you have to come up with all those dimensions. It entails a lot of maths and physics inside. No, it, it. only entails you and a pair of uh, <laughs> uh, you know, measuring yeah. tape <laughs> and you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's really nice. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. This has been Meet the HR show with our lady and I hope you have learned a lot. This has been amazing. Esther Wairimo, a mechanical engineer. If you're at home and you want to pursue it, why not? No human is limited. Till next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>